Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Speaker Shikarchi, it's great to say that. Senate President Ruggiero, my great partner and friend, and my beautiful family who have been with me at every step of this journey. And most of all, to my fellow Rhode Islanders. Tonight we come together, united by the love that we share for our great state, and by the belief that our best days are ahead. Every year we gather in this chamber for this address. And normally this room is packed. Normally this chamber is filled with members of the legislature, members of my cabinet, judges, local leaders, mayors, and so many others. I'm really missing all of you tonight, and I wish you could be here. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your friendship, your support, and your partnership over these past six years. But like everything else, we've had to change our traditions because of COVID in order to stay safe. 2020 was a year we will never forget. Together, we faced challenges and tragedy like never before. But we got through it. We got through it. We got through it the way Rhode Islanders have always gotten through difficult times. We innovated and we persevered. We just didn't give up. And so tonight we come together as a state to allow ourselves to envision a brighter, more joyful, more prosperous time ahead. A time when we can be together a time we can be together again in person, holding each other, hugging each other, being with our friends, working together, learning together, enjoying each other's company without so many restrictions, being together as Rhode Islanders, as family, as friends, as we love to do. 2021 will be our year of rebuilding. And make no mistake about it, there's a lot of work to do. But tonight I stand before you confident, filled with confidence, that together we've laid a foundation for a stronger, more equitable Rhode Island. And I know that Lieutenant Governor McKee is going to be ready for this job on day one. He is accomplished, passionate about Rhode Island, experienced, and I think he's going to be great. I also want you to know there will be no disruption to our state's COVID-19 response. And Lieutenant Governor McKee has assured me and is committed to keeping the entire statewide response team in place. So be reassured, as I am reassured, that Rhode Island is in a good, stable place. Our weekly percent positive is about 3%. That's lower than it's been in months. Our hospitalizations continue to decline. We've performed over two and a half million tests and administered over 100,000 vaccines. So by every measure, we are on the right path, we are on solid footing, and yes, the end is finally in sight. 
Tonight, as we reflect on the past year, I'd like to begin by recognizing the nearly 2,200 families across our state that have lost a loved one to COVID-19. I say that with a heavy heart. I've gotten to know many of you and I've heard from still more. This horrible virus has robbed so many of you of your loved ones, but of a chance to say goodbye properly. So I want you to know we love you, we grieve with you, we support you, and we're praying for you. And tonight we are lighting the dome of the State House red, white, and blue in honor of your loved ones. 2020 was indeed a year of heartbreak and struggle. Every day, it seemed, that I heard from Rhode Islanders who were living the struggle. Healthcare professionals working overnight shifts, seven days a week without a day off. Parents trying to juggle between holding down their job and teaching their kids distance learning at home. Waiters, waitresses, cashiers, clerks, out of work, struggling to survive on their unemployment insurance checks, wondering whether they'd get their job back. And if they would, when would that come? I heard from small business owners who wanted to stay open and make payroll. They wanted to be there for their employees, but they didn't know how long they could hold on. And I heard from so many courageous Rhode Islanders fighting their fight against addiction and families devastated by overdose. All problems made worse by the pandemic. And in this pandemic, we know that women have borne the brunt of this economic crisis. Women have lost jobs in record numbers. Women are disproportionately on the front lines as are teachers, nurses, childcare workers, and caregivers. And we sure know that moms have borne the load at home. But at the same time, at the same time we've endured this struggle and sacrifice, our challenges have also united us and inspired us. Healthcare workers and teachers came out of retirement to join us in the fight. We built field hospitals, world-class field hospitals, in a matter of weeks. We established the best in the nation COVID testing, provided housing and child care to frontline workers, successfully set up distance learning in about a week over spring break last year, and then we brought kids safely back into the classroom. And now we're on a mission to vaccinate every single Rhode Islander as quickly as possible. Sure, none of that has been easy. It's been hard and a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice. Everyone has sacrificed this year. So I'd like to say to every Rhode Islander, to every Rhode Islander who's had to cancel a celebration, miss a milestone, delay your travel, be away from your family, wear your mask every minute of every day, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your commitment. Because by those actions, you saved lives. While much has been taken from us, this past year, the strength and spirit of who we are as Rhode Islanders endures. In fact, I think it's stronger than ever. I've seen it up close, day after day, in this pandemic. When I think about the past year, I think about neighbors checking in on each other, 
offering to pick up groceries, offering to pick up a prescription, writing letters, checking in on folks, connecting virtually. I think about all those businesses that changed their business on a dime and moved overnight to start producing gowns and masks and hand sanitizer. I think about all those times I got up there at those press conferences asking for help and never once did I doubt whether the people of Rhode Island would respond because every time you did. I think about the thousands of state employees and the men and women of the Rhode Island National Guard who sacrifice so much to serve their state on the front lines. That's what inspires me. You all have inspired me. What has kept me going with energy and commitment is you. Is you. Is your spirit, your relentless community spirit, commitment to one another and to our great state. And that is why, my fellow Rhode Islanders, I stand before you tonight more confident than I have ever been that the state of our state is strong because the people of our state are strong. And make no mistake about it, Rhode Island is ready to meet this moment, to meet this year of rebuilding, to get this economy back on its feet. I know that because of the work we've done together these past six years to make our state stronger. We've made investments in Rhode Islanders, in skills, education, job creation, infrastructure, health care, equity, and sustainability. And on that foundation, we will together build back better. And crucially, we will make sure, we must make sure, that nobody's left behind. It's going to take everyone to rebuild this economy, and that means that everyone has to reap the rewards. Six years ago, on a cold, snowy day, I stood on the State House steps. And I vowed to you at that time that together we were going to ignite Rhode Island's comeback. Now, if you think back to that time, 2014, we were stuck. Our economy was stuck. Our state was stuck in the wake of the Great Recession. And we had been for years. And there were a lot of people who told me at that time they thought our problems were too big to solve. We couldn't get out of it. The system was broken, too broken to be fixed. So as a result, some folks lowered their expectations. And I think more than a little bit of cynicism set in. But on that cold and snowy day, we together committed to a fresh start. And at that time, I asked every one of you to ask yourselves how you could be part of Rhode Island's comeback. And in the last six years, Rhode Island stepped up over and over again. Rhode Islanders stepping up to become part of the solution. Committing to doing things differently. Committing to believing, really believing, that change was possible. And to harnessing that eternal optimism of our founders as we together charted a new course. 
We rolled up our sleeves and we got to work. Now when we started, we didn't have any of the job creation tools that we needed. So we designed them from scratch. And I would like to take a minute to thank my partners in the legislature for your partnership in those early days and weeks of my administration when we started designing those tools, and frankly, every day since. Thank you. Because together, all that hard work, willingness to embrace change, together, we went in the last six years from having the highest unemployment rate in America to having more jobs than ever before in our state. We worked with businesses to give Rhode Islanders the skills they needed to get actual jobs in growing fields in Rhode Island. And then when COVID hit, we supercharged that job training program. And now, because of it, 7,000 Rhode Islanders who had been laid off because of COVID have gotten skills to get back to work. The year we started working together, the year that I took office, Rhode Island had $84 million of commercial real estate investment. $84 million in the entire state for the whole year. By the end of our first term working together, Rhode Island saw a record billion dollars of investment in our state, which created countless jobs. The long, empty 195 land in Providence is no longer an empty field. It's a vibrant hub of innovation with two million square feet of new development underway, creating thousands of new jobs. We've also cut thousands of pages of unnecessary regulations and started the state's first small business loan fund. And importantly, of the loans we've made from that new small business loan fund, more than half have gone to minority and women-owned businesses. I have to tell you that for me it's much more than the statistics of how much our economy has bounced back. What I am maybe most proud of is that through it all, we have focused on building an economy that works for workers. In partnership, hand in hand, with our friends in labor, we've made sure that our economy works for workers. We've increased wages for child care and home care workers jobs held primarily of women in color. We've provided paid sick leave and paid family leave. We've made sure that nearly every single Rhode Islander has health insurance. We've codified Roe v. Wade. And we have raised the minimum wage four times. Now I think we should keep going and raise the minimum wage again. Because now more than ever, now more than ever, hardworking people in Rhode Island deserve and need a raise. So I look to the Senate President and Speaker and say, how about it guys? How about before I leave we raise the minimum wage one more time? Over the last six years, we also went 
from having the worst infrastructure in America, 50 out of 50 worst roads and bridges, to having more road construction than it ever before. And by the way, in the process, we've created thousands of good paying union jobs. We've grown our green economy, built the nation's first offshore wind farm, and put Rhode Island on a path to be the first state in America powered 100% by renewable energy by the end of this decade. Rhode Islanders can be proud that we are the state leading the nation in the fight against climate change. Of course, when it comes to our future, nothing's more important than our kids. Education is about equity. Education is how we ensure that every child in every neighborhood, in every zip code of every race, gets a fair shot to realize his or her potential. Working together with the legislature, I'm proud to say that every single year for the past six years, we have made record investments in our public schools. And we've gone from having school buildings crumbling all over the state to passing a once in a generation billion dollar investment in school construction. And this spring, you're going to see school construction all over the state in all cities and towns. In the time we've worked together these past six years, we have five times the number of public pre-K classrooms all over the state. And we've made it so that every child in Rhode Island can go to all-day kindergarten. We became the first state in America to teach computer science in every public school. We've increased the number of high-quality career and technical training programs in our high schools by 60%. And a few years ago, we opened the Westerly Education Center. And later this year, we're going to cut the ribbon on another education center in Woonsocket, building on the successful model that we've used in Westerly, which has already given over 3,000 Rhode Islanders the skills they need for a new job. At the same time, we took bold steps to make community college tuition free for all Rhode Island high school graduates. Now at the time we did that a few years ago, Rhode Island was one of only a few states to do that. But since then, many other states have followed our lead and they also have provided tuition-free community college. But do you want to hear the really important and exciting news for Rhode Island? Since we started offering the Promise Scholarship, the two-year graduation rate at CCRI has tripled. And increased by 500% for students of color. That's what it looks like to rebuild an economy that is based on equity and that doesn't leave people behind. To make sure that everyone can have the skills they need to get a decent job. Now last year I stood right here in this address and I warned the people of Rhode Island 
that that Promise Scholarship was set to expire. It was going to go away. And if that happened, we would literally be pulling the rug out from under thousands of Rhode Islanders at the worst possible time, at a time in our economy when you need a degree or credential past high school to get a decent job. That wouldn't be the right thing to do. And tonight I have great news. Tonight I have the news that due to the leadership of Speaker Shikarchi and Senate President Ruggiero and more than a dozen of their colleagues, that program's not going to expire. We are not going to pull the rug out from under our young people. They have committed to getting rid of the expiration date. They've sponsored legislation to make this initiative permanent. So tonight, on behalf of the thousands of CCRI students and graduates, and the countless more who will follow in their footsteps, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you for doing what's right, for leaning in, and for giving people in Rhode Island, these young people, a shot at the American dream. We're very lucky in Rhode Island because we get to live in a state that was founded on the principles of inclusion, acceptance, and equality. We here in Rhode Island believe all people deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and should have the same opportunities for success, no matter your race, your religion, your gender, your ethnicity, who you love, or where you come from. And it is these very principles that have guided our determination to appoint judges to look like the people that they serve in the courtrooms. In my time as your governor, I'm proud to have appointed highly qualified, talented judges at every level of our court system. But I'm also proud to have appointed the most diverse group of judges in our state's history. And tonight I want you to know that for the first time ever in our state's history, the Rhode Island Supreme Court is multiracial and majority female. And thank you to the Senate for being a partner in that work. For far too long, our state's name was dragged down by a word so closely associated with the ugliest time in our nation and in our state's history. And we can't change our past. But we have to acknowledge it and commit to a more inclusive future. And last year we did that. Last year the people of Rhode Island came together and made history voting overwhelmingly to finally remove the word plantations from the official name of our great state. This is the Rhode Island that we have built together in the past six years. This is the foundation that we have laid for a bright future, for a Rhode Island that brings everyone along we got to keep up the fight. We owe it to each other to keep up the fight. This past Monday marked 11 months 
since the first case of COVID-19 in Rhode Island. 11 months. It seems like a lot longer, doesn't it? We've traveled a difficult path in these past 11 months. But the whole time, we've held on to hope. Just as our state flag inspires us to do. You can get through any struggle if you hold on to hope. I will always have hope in Rhode Island. <clears throat> this is a state that has given my family a lot of reason to hope. It gave my grandfather hope when he got on a boat as a teenager by himself from Italy to come to this state. To teach himself English at night in the Providence Public Library. It's a state where for many years, decades, my father, a World War II Navy veteran, and the first in his family to attend college on the GI Bill, was able to support his family with a good job in manufacturing, but all the while hoping for an even brighter future for his kids and his grandkids. <clears throat> Rhode Island is where my brother and my sister and I were born and grew up and rode the waves every summer at Sand Hill Cove Beach. It's where Andy and I were married. It's where Cece and Tommy were born. It's where I started my business and where I have had the honor of a lifetime to serve as your treasurer and as your governor. And I hope you know just how grateful I am and always will be for the trust that you've placed in me these past 10 years that we have worked side by side. Rhode Island is, and always will be, my home. I have to say it's very difficult for me to leave Rhode Island. It is a bittersweet moment. If I'm confirmed as Commerce Secretary, it will indeed be a privilege to serve in President Biden's cabinet. And we have a lot of work to do to rebuild America, rebuild the American economy, and lift up those who have been left behind. And I see it as a continuation of all the work we've done here together these past six years. But I want again to say thank you. Thank you, Rhode Island. Thank you for embracing me. Thank you for embracing my family, my children who have grown up in these last 10 years, embraced by the people of Rhode Island. And thank you, Rhode Island, for embracing change. I have tried to bring change to this state, to bring opportunity. And change is not always easy. And sometimes it's a little scary, but thank you for embracing that change. I have to take a moment tonight to also thank my unbelievable team. I'm not sure why I got so lucky or how I got so lucky to have you guys, but you are incredible. I want to thank you for your talent, your energy, your passion. Thank you for never giving up, for working hard, and for always being committed to public service and the people of Rhode Island. And for 
jumping two feet in to our mission of making Rhode Island stronger, more equal, and a place of opportunity. And of course, I want to thank Rhode Islanders in every community for believing in our vision. You've made me a much better person and a better governor. So thank you. At my first inauguration, the cold, snowy day, I promised you that day that I would wake up every day focused on expanding opportunities for Rhode Island families. No matter what obstacles were thrown in our way and how hard it would be, I promised you I would go anywhere, talk to anyone, work with anyone who wanted to do what was right for Rhode Island. And that's exactly what I have done every single day as your governor. I have tried to the best of my abilities to honor that commitment to you. Now, although I may be working in Washington, I'm going to take you all with me. I'm going to take the countless Rhode Islanders and all of your stories and your experiences and everything you've taught me with me, and you will be top of mind in what I do. That means every small business owner, every promised scholar who just wants a chance, every one of you of the more than 11,000 who've had the courage to sign up for the Real Jobs Training Program, maybe in the middle of your career, to get new skills for a new job, every woman breaking down barriers, every single Rhode Islander stepping up, giving back, digging in, and committing themselves to this great state. Tonight, I give you my commitment that I will continue to wake up every day focused on making life better for all of you and all of our fellow Americans. I will wake up every day committed to providing opportunity and a level playing field and a shot at the American dream for every Rhode Islander and for every American. So many years from now, we're going to look back at 2020. And we're going to look back at everything we overcame together. And it's been a lot. <laughs> what I hope we remember about this year isn't so much the struggle and the sacrifice and the hardship. I hope what we remember is our strength and determination and fortitude, which is what carried us from some of the darkest, scariest days into a brighter, more prosperous, more equitable future. Now, uh, this being my last state of the state, I do want to leave with a special message for girls and young women across the state. I will say that in my time as governor, one of the best, most inspiring parts of the job has been meeting so many young girls excited to meet a female governor. And you see the hope and the optimism in their eyes. So my message to you tonight 
is this. The world needs you. The world needs your voice. The world needs your talent. The world needs you to speak up. And the world needs you to lead. Now I'll tell you something. When I was first asked by the president to serve as Commerce Secretary, I was a little unsure and a little nervous. Could I do it? Should I do it? But it was the women in my life, my amazing strong mother, who has been by my side in everything I've ever done, my older sister, and my teenage daughter. The three of them gave me the push I needed. They told me I had to take my own advice. They said it's okay to be unsure. It's okay to be nervous, but you have to look within yourself and summon the courage to lead. So that's my message to all the girls and young women out there. I want you to look within yourself and find the courage to lead. Now listen, there's going to be plenty of times in your life that you'll be unsure. You wonder if you can do it. You'll be nervous. I want you to push aside that doubt. I want you to push aside that fear and say yes. Because know this, you are smart, you are capable, you are strong, you can be whatever you want to be, and the world needs your voice and your talent. And it'll be a better place if you say yes. And I am sure looking forward to the day that one of you is the governor of this great state. So thank you, Rhode Island. God bless you, and God bless Rhode Island.